things. So. Oh Lord. Yeah. How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Wright? Frankly, there are still a lot of gray areas. Or rather, the whole thing is one big gray area. Don't worry about me, no matter what the outcome. I'm ready to accept my fate. I believe in you, sis! Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yes? A defense attorney should never believe their client. The defendant is called to the trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. Sky, you... You remind me a lot of Mia. But there is one decisive difference between you and her. And that is... You're not a defense attorney. I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. My first try without Fay of uh, without a Fay helping me. No one's going to bail out me out this time. I'll be alone in there. So I have to discover the truth all by myself. Let's do it, Mr. Wright! I'll be with you the whole way. I appreciate the support. Alright, here we go. Courtroom number nine. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Oh, shut the fuck up, edgy boy. Edgeworth. It's been two months, but I haven't been to a courtroom since this trial. Sorry, I just fixed something. I hope that personal feelings will not be a part of the proceedings today, Mr. Wright. <sighs> I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. The judgment to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well, Mr. Edward, your opening statement, please. Chief Prosecutor Lana Skye has committed an unpardonable crime. Not only this, but she was rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office lot. Bullshit! Wow, you much more forceful in person. I suddenly feel like confessing to everything. However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. There was a witness to her crime. A professional witness. Well then, call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls his first witness, Miss Angel Starr, to the stand. Of the cough of Queen? Hmm? I want to see you somewhere. You ordered the caviar lunch, right? Oh, caviar. I've never eaten caviar before. So you're full of shit. <laughs> the judge is really wolfing it down. And for you, I have a fiesta ball. I like it. Uh, thanks. Will the witness state her name and profession? Ah, and uh, you, sir? Did you order the fingerprint lunchbox? A little on the nose there, don't you think? <laughs> it is too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Well, your honor, how does it taste? This is what everyone raised about caviar. It's so tasty it hurts. It's not that tasty. I always thought caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. That mm, sounds fucking no, that's, disgusting. That sounds so gross. What the heck does pickled tapioca taste like? Disgusting! <laughs> name, profession, now. Me? The name is Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself running Lunchland these days. Is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. The prosecution will wait. I'm not finished eating. Hurry it up! Mm. 
Very well, Mr. Eckbert. As you know, we usually call him police rather than explicit. A description of the crime. Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. I don't like the way you phrase it like that. I don't like that either. What exactly does that mean? Until two years ago, Miss Angel Starr was a special investigator with the police. Ah, so you have a viable reason to be a, uh, not a witness per se, but, uh, not a witness per se, but, uh, accomplice, if you would. She was a first-rate homicide detective. Yep, this is all smelling so rotten. What? Miss Star was a detective? Ah, uh, ha! <laughs> I know who you are. Cough up. Cough up, Queen Angel Star. Your Honor. Long time no see. Very well. You may continue with the description, Miss Star. Just who is this lady? If I might have the court's attention over here, look up, please. No, I'm going to be looking down disrespectfully now. The parking lot of the prosecutor's, pa, 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 prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. Block A is for the prosecutor's office personnel. Block B block is for visitors and clients. A chain divider separates the two blocks. I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up prosecutor's spaces, yes? The crime took place by a car in the back of A block, in the car's trunk. Like the killer stabbed the victim with this knife and went to drive the bloody out. The body out, not bloody. Same thing. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness, and arrest was made on the spot. And who was this valiant witness? Why, it was me, your honor. Talking about floor plans added to the quarter carriage. Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, your honor. Immediately after that, I apprehended the chief prosecutor. Hold on. It's 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 a, it's a conspiracy. They're easily framing the prosecutor. It's because it, it seems like it's police office versus detective aid. The police office versus prosecution. None of that, but she said like she wasn't a uh, detective two years ago. So why did she take it upon herself to apprehend the chief prosecutor? Exactly. This whole thing's a conspiracy. There's a lot of there's a lot of elements at play here. That's why I'm thinking my version of events might be true. You could say that this reeks of. Oh yeah, this reeks of. Bullshit. Yeah. Okay. That that, that tracks. <laughs> I was like, wait, because I thought we were being serious here. We're like, no, this whole thing smells of bullshit. Hmm. It seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Wright. Uh, I can't agree on principle, Your Honor. It seems that poor losers are unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honor. Don't use your brain cells, please, don't lose it. You know, hanging around gumshoe too long. <laughs> Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? If you can, then give them your worst, Miss Star. Judge, whose fucking side are you on? Wait, are, are they talking about me? All right, let's hear it. Took a minute. I know it took a minute for me. Sorry. Uh, somehow, I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. Which one? But I sensed something. Perhaps it was my finely honed detective's intuition at work. <sighs> Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. Chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Hmm. Bring in a lunchbox to your boyfriend. I'll touch you. Which one? Hmm. As you can see, there is no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be nothing other than. Yeah, exactly. She's either thrust the tip of the knife into it. No, there's no way. The point of the knife, which you saw being stabbed at the Detective Goodman. So, how does it feel to be so utterly crushed? I'm still thinking about that. 
<laughs> it's merely a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. Okay. I need to ask about that knife, first and foremost. Uh, <laughs> holding a knife in her right hand. Hold it! Hold it! Tell me more about this knife that the suspect was carrying. Well, I'd say the blade was about four inches long. Is that right, Mr. Edward? Is it is your knife, after all? Uh, <clears throat> yes, that's about right. Prosecutors are, by nature, well-versed in the location of a man's vital organs. I'm sure it was easier than boiling an egg for my egg salad surprise set. You can't testify as your ability to kill an egg. I mean, a person. Hmm? Perhaps a chicken salad set would have been a better metaphor. You know, a chicken salad, like, or at least especially a chicken Caesar salad, sounds pretty good. Chicken right Caesar now. salad sounds so good right now. So, the defendant was holding a knife. What then? And she thrust the pointy tip of the knife. Into Hold it! Tell the court why you didn't try to stop this crime. You did see her raise the knife to strike, no? Hmm. The defense has a point. Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. Too late. Yes. The next moment, the chief prosecutor brought down the murder weapon. I... I... I see. It's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. You said that before. Anything else? No, she's right. Because the amount of blood on that knife doesn't match. Scientifically speaking, Miss Star's testimony is flawless. Sounds pretty fatal to me. Really? What do we do? Is this it? Is my sister? No, she's not. Let's just keep our heads cool and press the witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, having her panicking next to me makes me calmer. But don't smile like that. Somehow, I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver lunchbox to my pardon me. Because I took a look. Check this real quick. Lots of buttons judging off by a four, four by five inch, a four and a half inch knife, which would match the knife's description. Hold on, let me look at the, the, the knife real quick. Wait, no, it doesn't give me details. Uh, no prints. A single stab was found, so nothing that matches there. This is four inches. The half inch is negligible. Yeah, it probably could mean, like, the handle of it. Yeah, it's like, the half inch is negligible. Um, did you say it was four inches and four inches and half inches? There's no real point in pressing that point, because that's just semantics at that point. Hold on, I was on my way to the little box with my boyfriend when I... S Hold on. Actually, about your boyfriend. Where is he located? His boyfriend. He's the detective. Not that boyfriend. The security guard. Aha! Uh -huh. So you do have two boyfriends. That boyfriend? You have several? Yes. This boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Care to join? A polycule! <laughs> the yet another boyfriend position is still open for applicants. Uh, I'll stick with the lunch, thanks. Now just have the judges that think before replying. <laughs> The security guard room is a lot is in the, is in the lot, the in a block. It's up on the second level where you can see everything. That would be the room with the security sign. Incidentally, did you bring your lunch boxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I parked in B block. So she was in B block when she witnessed the crime. That's the thing. She's in a different cell block. How could she have seen anything? Well, remember, the, it was a wire fence. Yeah, through so the wire fence, saw the judge prosecutor kind of standing next to a garage car, holding a knife in her right hand, so she thrusts his knee in his chest. How did she get past the wire fence? Yeah, that's... Hold on. How did she get past the wire fence? Pardon me. Hold it! By garage car. Not the garage car! The wire fence is what we want to ask, but okay. Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. M Mr. Edgeworth? Incidentally, the knife with which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's, wasn't it? Indeed it was. 
Hmm, what an odd case this is. And the person you saw, you are sure it was the defendant? I saw her from no further than 30 feet away. I am certain it was her. If she's telling the truth, we're doomed. Let's do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we can always nitpick. We're dealing with Edgeworth here. And if we're dealing with Edgeworth here. I need something more substantial than that. Mm. Can you tell us what the suspect was doing when you saw her? Alright, hold on. This is where we need to start presenting. Question Not is... Not yet. Not yet? There's still one more statement you gotta press. So I'm pressing... I'm literally pressing every single statement. No, it was only just the first, second, and fourth. So, yeah. How did you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic abhorrence of crime. Yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to tragedy. The lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted. Given that they are used to erasing inconvenient evidence at their whim. Killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Miss Star, you have something personal against prosecutors? I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator. And if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Laid off? She was fired. Ah, so that's why she's an accomplice. To me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. That said, I am a pro, as you know. My testimony is unbiased and flawless. Very well. You may continue, Miss Star. That ne didn't necessarily give me anything other than verbally that she has a dissent with prosecutors. We got the photo, right? We do have the photo, yes. It's the photo of the... The base... Is, uh, hold on. It is... Yeah, it's a parking lot plans. That's all we got. So I'm just thinking... Yeah, because we should have gotten thinking, another photo. Yeah, that's... It's a matter of... I'm thinking... Well, cause, oh, shit. I didn't mean to press it again. Sorry. That's, that's my bad. I didn't mean to press it again. Sorry. No further than 30 feet away. 30 feet away behind a wire? Witness, in your testimony, you clearly stated the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than... Oh, we have to repress! Yeah, because okay. you, you did it out of order, that's why. Okay. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. Ergo, you are a biased witness. You might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in the future, rookie. Huh? Rookie. Unless you're willing to risk the consequences of doubting me. I'll fry you like a fritter. Crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. That... that was inspiring. I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You could try plagiarism? I may be relegated to the lowly post of lunch lady, but my instincts are honed. Uh, a photograph? You took this? Oh, interesting. The moment I witnessed the crime, my reflexes took over and snap. I took a picture. In fact, one of my lunchboxes is rigged with a camera. I suppose that's more exciting than just hanging it around your neck. Witness, why am I only seeing this photograph just now? You think I'd show it to you? A prosecutor? Think again. My boyfriend works in the photography division of criminal affairs. Well, this is most certainly the defendant. The moment of the crime photographed by Angel Star. Uh oh, that is unmistakably Lena Sky. But she's not stabbing anyone. So, what was the defendant doing at the time? The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her. No, she wasn't. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, bitch! I don't see no knife nowhere. In fact, I see an injury on her. I'm calling it now. You're full of shit. You're full of bullshit.
and you witnessed this. You saw Miss Guy stab the victim with a knife. As I've already said yes. I swear to my finest salmon swirl lunch. See, that sounds delicious, but not right now. Mmm, I'm sure that is a fine lunch. But isn't that odd? Look at this photograph. Every time I look, it makes me laugh. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> this is the photograph you took of the very moment of the crime, is it not? Then why is Miss Guy not holding a knife? <clears throat> Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? Objection. Bullshit! That had to be the weakest objection ever, Edgeworth. Yet it was still stronger than your ever feeble mind. Bullshit! Bullshit! I wish I could just spam it. I can't spam it. Bullshit! There you go. <laughs> what do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. This was taken the moment after the stabbing. Where's the knife, though? Objection! And how could you tell that? Blood splatter. Huh? See the dark crimson stains on Chief Prosecutor's coat? Huh? But it's a black and white photograph! Ah, uh, yes, it's hard to tell, but this could be blood. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. Nope. Oh, sorry, I thought that was Phoenix because it looks like Phoenix. No problem, except you. Mr. Wright, are you going to just sit there and take that kind of abuse? Welcome to the Ace Attorney Judgment Systems. Uh, you got a better idea? Yes, actually. I have a big pro fucking objection. Because it's no, there's no proof that it was from his body. Wait, that contradicts what the witness said in her testimony. Namely, that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime. Well, it seems I was slightly unclear. My apologies. That means you have to rephrase your testimony. That means you have to restate your testimony to fit with the actual facts. That's it? If you run out of lunch, your order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering the jumbo-sized lunch from the get-go. Good advice. I'm not sure I understood it, but... Good advice. I didn't have time to stop her. Prosecutor Sky was cold, calculating like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a premeditated murder. Objection! Premeditated? How do you know? Look at the chief prosecutor's hands in that photograph. Well, are those... Gloves? Surgical gloves made of thin rubber, most likely. Why would she have those on? Because she has an injury on her hand. Why would you wear gloves for an injury? If it was not premeditated, she would not be wearing those gloves. Uh, well, I guess, like, in certain, in certain jobs, you actually have to wear gloves if you're injured on your hands. It depends on the job. Like, for example, chefs, whenever they're injured in their hands, not only do they have to bandage their hands, but they also have to put a surgical glove on it to make sure no blood seeps out on accident. It could be, and this is me throwing caution to the wind, being like, if it was cleaning day... Oh my god, it was cleaning day. It was cleaning day! They had to wear gloves! To get rid of evidence, they can't fuck with the evidence with their own fingerprints. So it was cleaning day! <laughs> These gloves do seem to tell a tale of premeditation. Premeditated murder, a serious offense. Witness, add this to your testimony. Alright, from the top. The murder was planned. The rubber gloves prove it. Uh, hold it. hold it. What if she was just in the habit of wearing gloves? Really stupid? <laughs> like driving gloves. Objection. Stupid, it was cleaning day. Those gloves were admitted as evidence when the defendant was arrested. They were rubber gloves. Oops, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm just checking on, on the uh, e scored. Okay. They were rubber gloves of the kind used for autopsies. In other words, when the chief prosecutor came to the crime scene, she came to do murder. It's the only possible conclusion one can make. 
Everything was planned. It was a premeditated crime. Impressive. I'm sorry they took you off the horse, Miss Star. This is bad. She's got them thinking it was all planned. She can prove this claim. The trial's already over. Gotta think of a way to show that this wasn't premeditated. It's only a flush room, Mr. Wright. We can make it. You said that before. Anything else? Scientifically speaking, it's flawless. Sounds pretty fatal to me. What do we do? What, this is it? Is my sister guilty? Shut up! Like, shut up! Okay. So let's think about this. What, what information do we have? Is there any way to clearly indicate to... I know the other thing is Oh shit 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 The rubber gloves don't There's no way to prove that Okay if I swing in this direction, this could be Goodman's note trying to find a case file. Handling a case file would require gloves. Okay. She's a detective. No, she was doing cleaning, so she probably had those gloves on. However, we have nothing to prove that there was cleaning duties today. Whatever the case may be, this is what we have to press, and this is what we have to present. Correct. Us. Huh? Yeah, you're you're right. That this is the statement that we need to present. Yeah. So it's a matter of. This would be developing like this is oh they were they're doing cases. Showing this would not prove any point because there's no trace of fingerprints. So that would only prove the point that literally just like rubber gloves were used to make sure there were no prints on the on the fucking knife. Well, about that. What? Is there gonna be magical fingerprints on the knife? Where was that knife found? In the car. How would she have known that? You're right. Oh my god, you're right. She wouldn't have known there was a knife in the car to begin with. Objection! Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell lunchboxes for a living, you know. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edwards' trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. What's with this case? The defendant is she prosecuted for the district, right? Bonnie and prosecutors, bad people! The defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Sky planned this murder. And that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing? The murder weapon? Oh. The knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, and those who've been to the binary and not, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon. Also, to answer the question of why there's a child, at least like I know in, in Japan, thanks to playing Persona 5, there's no age limit to being like there at a court uh, case. Yeah, you can watch a court case. I believe even in America, you depending on wh what age and what reason, you can actually watch cases. Order, order. Oh, sorry, judge. Order, order, order. Great. Now the tide is turning in our favor. Great show, Mr. Wright. 
My sister's as good as free. No, she's not. Not yet. Right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. Do you make pies in your in your your lunch stand, lady? <laughs> what? I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not over such a trifling detail. But this shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory. Bah. The prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. The defendant, Lana Skye, murdered the detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution need proof. Nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now. But you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him. It was all planned. If it wasn't, why would she have been wearing... I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness? Oh, sorry. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you! My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated! Really now? Then why were you fired? Exactly, why were you fired? Manasky intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Edge of the five dollars, master of puppets and pulling your strings. <laughs> Thank you for the five. Nothing else could drive a human machine to plunge the knife in again. I already know what I'm swinging at. Right here. I already know what I'm swinging at. Uh, yep. The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So, if I ordered a pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? No. <laughs> I mean, it's the same logic. <laughs> it's just, what the fuck? That actually is the same logic. She's actually right in that regard. If I order a pizza, does that mean I'm premeditatedly trying to murder the pizza boy? <laughs> in any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. 28 stab wounds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bitch. I'm not even gonna fucking play with you. I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not even gonna fucking play with you. Get off of my fucking stand. You say she stabbed him again and again, but you couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? Then I'll test you with my moss surprise. That sounds so grotesque. I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Miss Star. 28 bento boxes! <laughs> what do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. The autopsy report states that death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Aha! Uh -huh. You're right. Good show, Miss Edgeworth. What a hunk! He's my hero, really! Honey... I, if you, it, I would suggest hiding from the fandom because I don't believe he, if the fandom believes he swings in your direction. What about my objection? No one noticed? World witness? You got the crime scene set, right? Uh, oh, thanks. It's just ketchup and rice. <laughs> that sounds gross, but at the same time, I feel like that's like someone's struggle meal somewhere. That's a struggle meal, 100%. I always believe that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realize yeah, such right. mistakes are possible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Splattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw, what... Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Justify, sister. <laughs> her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how gassy the whole scene was. So wait, her red muffler looked like blood? What? Hold, hold, what? Hold it! 
Her red muffler? Yes, like a scarf. The chief prosecutor always wears one around her neck. So she can be easily hanged at a moment's notice, I suppose. She's right. The sky was wearing a red scarf, wasn't she? But wait. Isn't it odd that you mistook that for splattered blood? Well, people often mistake my beard. For what? For a... For a bib! <laughs> a judge with a bib! That's why this place feels so much like a kindergarten sometimes. <laughs> Actually... I do think sh I saw some traces of blood on her chest. However, the autopsy report is clear on this matter. There was only one knife wound. Apparently, Miss Star isn't entirely sure of her own testimony. Mr. Wright, this is our chance. Chance for what? I wonder. Miss Star has turned out of, turned out to be as short-tempered as she looked when we met her. Challenging her abilities as a detective really set her off. The short wick burns out the fastest. It is a scientific fact. I wonder. Wouldn't it depend on the size of the candle? I mean, add more wax and there's a really short wick with even a really short wick will burn longer. Obviously, more scientific testing is required. She wasn't wearing her scarf, bitch. She wasn't wearing her mid muffler. This is it. Miss Star, I demand an explanation. Objection. What? The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. What? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. And you've proved it yourself. With this photograph. Huh? But that... That can't be! Huh? Only a professional lunch lady could be so utterly clueless. Congratulations. Perhaps you finally found your true calling in life. Edward, quit trying to steal our fucking spotlight, you motherfucker. I'll choke you with that ascot. Hmm. Harsh words, but good. In the end, Mr. Edgeworth, I'm... Get, get the fuck out. <laughs> get out of the defense stand. Get out of here. What about my ejection? Chop liver? Why is Edgeworth helping us? Because Edgeworth doesn't want to be in for this position. No one wants to be in the position of, like, actually, like, prosecuting the chief prosecutor. B but it was there. A scarf. N no, not, not that. But something red, really. Well, now, where were we? The witness has given us an interesting interlude, but back to business. What? Very well, witness. Continue your testimony. Sorry, it looked like you skipped the line. I didn't. Sorry, it was the video just being weird. Okay. Anyway, you saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Do you? Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of our testimony. The most important part? The part where, you, the part where your sister stabbed the victim. How are you reading his mind? It's either he's, like, uh, you know, thinking in his head or probably whispering. Maybe mumbling? Yeah. This next testimony might be just to be the moment of truth. Alright. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Now hold on! Why was Goodman's wallet there, not hers? Ah, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief pr prosecutor made this made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. You're quite determined about the scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. Also, weren't you on the other side of the vents? Yeah, like... Unless there's like a door or maybe like a short gap. That's me, Angel Star. That nah, wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is a kind of like, kind of like, it's a kind of snake. No, 
Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. No thanks. Note to self, Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snake bites. So are a lot of people, sweetie. Put that in your notes. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. And an oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. <laughs> Very... <laughs> Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, if you will. Okay. I got a couple things to fucking doubt here, bitch. Okay, hold on. So, where was this partition on the four plans? I'm sure she means this wall next to the car. And that's right. There's a wall there. It's about six feet high. She's obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? I quickly caught her and explained her rights to her and arrested her on this- Hold it! You say quickly. Were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm, maybe I should press her for more details? Yes. i like to see this on the four plans just to be safe. Lunchland car was... She was a visitor. Thus, she was parked in Beetle. So you witnessed the murder from... Here? That would make it about 30 feet from the car, yes. Is that correct, Miss Star? Yes, that's right. But there was a chain link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. Amazing! The cough-up queen, a lunch lady athlete indeed. It would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence. So she couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast. Yeah, that fence was about nine feet high, too. So how did Miss Sky not get away? That's the thing. Pretty sure you couldn't have done this at all because of the big chain link fence. You're not a track star. You have no history as a track star. Besides, how would you know? Like, how would you have even caught her in time? I'm pretty sure we're presenting the floor plans because there's no fucking way she's jumping this shit. Yeah. Did you press the second statement? Yeah, where she like she was talking about like um the yeah. Uh, yeah, I pressed it, so yeah, yeah. B bitch, no way! Objection. What? What do you mean? Oh my god. <sighs> Stupid! Did you press the third statement? Oh my god. I have to press everything, don't I? One, two... Hold it. She mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? If I remembered exactly, I would have to hold you in my testimony. I would have told you in my testimony. Cheeky. Anyway, all I heard her was saying the word was the word muffler. Just that one word? So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else? Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? She can't meet. By phone, do you mean the cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately. My memory. It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see. No, the court doesn't see Miss. I don't see either. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car. There was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently it was- How would you have seen- Again, you weren't in block B, you were in block A. Because you yeah, saw all of this. How could you have seen that? Exactly. She couldn't have seen it from her position in block B. She had to have been in block A. <coughs> so she used her cell phone? Indeed. The emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm. Good witnessing, witness. 
Good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? You should, of course, add this to your testimony. The things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. Her mouth that was overheard during a call made to Emma at 518. <sighs> so, no, you fucking... No, you... No, you fucking didn't! No, you fucking didn't! You fucking did it! No, you fucking did it! You did not! You're full of shit! A star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Sky. Objection! So I'm just looking at the guide real quick, making sure we're doing things right. Yep. The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Well, who would have thought you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You, who, together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Oh. Oh, so you have now given us the reason why you are an accomplice to this crime. Thank you. It's like, it, 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 it was like, see, she's unbiased. Yeah, see, and now she's like, no, now I have a reason to have a bias. Like, bitch. <laughs> bitch. Well, Miss Star. This is a fatal contradiction in your testimony. How do you explain this? <clears throat> I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it all up. <clears throat> Let's look at the four plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true, you couldn't have possibly seen Miss Sky making that phone call. <laughs> I believe you see what I'm getting at. The emergency phone was on the back side of this part. If indeed you were in B block, you couldn't have seen it! <laughs> order! Order! What is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch, she's coughing up lies! Objection! <laughs> That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question? Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. The witness lied about... where she saw it. It's not about what she saw or the order of events. She she was not where she said she was. Miss Sky tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What's the significance about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless for Miss Star to lie about it. One of the lie. I see. But, say the witness did actually see Miss Guy using the emergency phone. It would mean... Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. Objection! A different location? Now that's a pointless lie if I ever heard one. Bullshit! Objection! Before you can call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. Let me ask a question to our... <laughs> Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard about this point it points in one direction. The place from where Mr. Witness's witnessed this crime was here. The security room. Because she was with her boyfriend. Oh, right Take that! This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room? You know, with this boyfriend, or that boyfriend, or the other boyfriend. <laughs> One of the boyfriends! Indeed. Oops, sorry. Is Wrong it? voice. Indeed, the security room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor, so you can see the entire lot. Hmm. You would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. Not in this case, Your Honor. The witness, not being part of the prosecutor's office, couldn't park in a lock. The only place where she could have seen the crime and the back of the partition is here. I remember in your testimony, you said you brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security room. Yes? Well, Miss Star. How many years have I been getting the better of men? To think that the tables could be turned. 
today a man has got the better of Angel Star. Order, order, witness. I didn't have any ordered lunch from you. <laughs> what have you done? You used to be a detective. You should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty? Is she talking about Miss Sky? Um, Mr. Wright? Doesn't this strike you as odd? Why did Miss Star lie? It doesn't make sense. She's part of the problem. Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime in the security guard station. What? They wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was a defendant who stabbed the victim. That truth still stands. It still stands? I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So? Tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Oh, me? Who else? Mr. Wright! Let's review what we know! Miss Star witnessed the crime of the good crime from the security guard station. But she lied and said she saw it from people. It must make a vital difference. But what? That means someone else was there. Yes, uh angle of the view to the crime distance and uh angle of the view. Yeah, so you... What? She was close enough where she could have stopped it. Yeah, so it's distance, not angle. That changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. Objection! What? My condolences, Mr. Wright. But one look at the floor plans and it's quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. I don't see how that would change what she could see. The distance she was from the... Objection! What she saw was not in question here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. She could have stopped it. She didn't. Miss Star, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now, how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Skye? Well, witness? You... Yes? You ordered the squid wheels, right? That's just rubber bands. I was gonna say they like rubber bands. <laughs> the quality of my lunches has now gone from low to inevitable! I was bringing a PB&J lunch with my fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Hmm? Boysenberry for the boyfriend? He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime in the glass walled station. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. So your bitch ass went all the way the fuck around. That's why I had to go through the visitor's parking and B block. That's quite a detour. It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. <laughs> five minutes? Bullshit! Hmm. This changes things considerably. Yeah, that is full of shit. But it was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it. I have photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. You have a point. And the spork is a wonderful invention. Would you like another caviar, lad? Absolutely. Fucking briber. Oh, no. It's all right. You have to do something. Do I have any evidence to stop this? Yeah, because... There are multiple people. It took you five minutes. When was the arrest made?
I don't think there was a specific time as to when the arrest happened. As far as I know, or at least from what I remember. All we know, so at least, again, from what I know so far, is that the car pulled up at, um, 512. Then the murder happened at around 515. Call happened call at 518. But we do have a piece of evidence. What are we defending against here? The fact that she took her time to get there? I, yeah, I feel like we we can be able to raise an objection to this. Objection! Five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest. Think about it. You can make pasta in that amount of time. You actually could. If you, if you like it al dente. I've got lunchboxes that tie pasta into knots, rookie. A five minute blank? Isn't that strange? Strange. If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, Your Honor? Well, um, I guess I'd play the scene. Hey! Don't get the wrong idea. I didn't kill anyone. I know you, but you have the instincts of a killer. You would run. But this time was different. Miss Sky dawdled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. Yar. Yar. Well, it seems to come to the end of this testimony. The witness has a grudge against the defendant and a blank in her testimony. <laughs> Mr. Edward, is the next witness ready to go? Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated this witness on account of her professional history. We did it! We screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright! Th that was too close. I'm afraid that the cough up queen has been dethroned. With that, court is adjourned. Okay. What? Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? That's the one she tried to voice off of me! I prefer not to take the defense's, defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. You said that how many times and yet we proved that that was bullshit? For real. What was that? Is this another one of her trick lunchboxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Star. Ah. Huh. Is this your jumbo lunchbox? Woo! A triple decker. Watch, it's all poisoned. Right? Or just like laced with laxatives. Right. Out of difference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. Uh, of course. I'm pretty sure this is fucking bribery that this is happening and you're It's you're bribery! It. It's fucking bribery! And you know, most people would think bribery would involve money. Nah, it can also include food too, apparently. 100%. Like the lunchtime motto says, you won't be disappointed. That's such a shitty motto. Right. What is she going to pull out of her lunchbox this time? All right. Decisive everything. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now, to the matter of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? No. Two types of blood were found on the shoe. One was, of course, the victim's. And the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Skye. Ah, that, uh... That's the, uh, Argentino peso. Cool! This proves it. The flawless, decisive evidence. Her shoe? What? There was blood found on that shoe? Try Lunchland for all your lunch and decisive evidence needs. <laughs> Witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is it the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple, as I've already said. 
I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And you had blood tests performed? Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in forensics. In any case, Your Honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? You must know the true rules of evidence law. 1. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence, at least for the time being. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth sure is celebrating. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't forget, I used to be a detective. As I mentioned previously, this shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of, uh, today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. This soon, though? Yeah, actually. In this law-abiding state, I guess. So enough to where Edgeworth's not combating it. Uh. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty solid. You can only study some evidence law, really! The prosecutor's complaints notwithstanding. It appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. Now what about the second? However, it seems you have yet another count against you, witness. Anything to ensure that the guilty are properly judged. Fix your shoe added to the court record. White enamel shoe bears traces of blood from Goodman and Lennis Guy. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. Okay. Let's talk about this fucking shoe for a bit. Uh, blah, 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 blah. We're gonna bring this up. Two types of blood. One, of course, was the victim's. Uh, Hold it! You can't say for sure the blood belonged to the defendant with the blood test. You claim to know something about blood test, rookie? Huh? Well, speak up! Oh. Oh. Blood comes in four types, A, B, O, and A, B. However, you can't tell from a blood test whether a murder was committed in cold blood. Okay, fine, so put it in a microwave. <laughs> That's just a figure of speech, Mr. Wright. Actually, we can differentiate between millions of types with all the blood tests out there. Which means that we can more than less narrow any sample of blood down to just one person. Or, so I hear. You're not helping. <laughs> That's pretty specific. If I had a little more time, I could have gotten the DNA test results. But they said there's very little doubt it could be anyone's but Mrs. Lana Skies. Mm. The suspect's blood was found on the victim's shoe. That ties her directly to the death of Detective Goodman. I was afraid you were going to say that. So, you brought it to the forensics department? If you're going to submit something as evidence in court, you need it approved. To do that, evidence must be analyzed by a forensics expert. And she got away with her little coup because she used to be a detective. The shoe does appear to have bloodstains on it. Well, the man was stabbed after all. And the blood belonged to the victim, Detective Goodman. As I said, there were two types of blood found on the shoe. That contradicts some evidence here. Trace of the victim's blood, not the trace of the second dude, but where'd the other second blood come from? Hold on, let's see. Yeah, it's literally, if it's only the victim's blood, where is the other trace of blood? I think I'm right here. How am I not right? Uh, this is just what the guide is saying, so you gotta press the last statement. I already pressed both statements! Not the last one. Why do I gotta press these statements when it doesn't make sense? Can't get this, this evidence go without a fight. You ordered the peppered fish guts, right? That's horrifying. If it's at least salmon, then maybe. Because it looks like 
you know, salmon nigiri. Yeah. Some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Some, like your client, he's in enough hot water to make a whole vat of soup. Mr. Wright, do or do you not, uh, don't you have the problem with the shoe? A problem? This is critical. Is there a problem with the victim's shoe? Yes, there's a problem with the fucking shoe. Why is the defendant not wearing it? I'm not imagining this. I'd say there's one critical problem with his evidence. A clear contradiction. That gleam in your eyes. You're still young, rookie. I'd give you a peppered fish gut now. But you couldn't take the heat, could you? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. What is contradictory about the victim's shoe? Show us the problem with this evidence. She could have stepped in the blood. It's. It's either this blood stain or this blood stain. Yeah, hold on. Wait a minute. They're on two opposite sides of the shoe. The wrong button. Take that! I wonder if you noticed. There's blood on the bottom of the shoe. Don't mess with me, rookie. Or it'll be our blood on the bottom of my shoe. I like to uh, add it to the court record that she threatened to kill me. Right? Hmm. Indeed, there is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. It makes sense. The victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly con be contradictory about the blood on the bottom of the shoe? Wait, hold, hold the fuck up. She's wearing black shoes in this! Where, why are there white shoes? Why are white shoes being presented? Am I dumb? No. Like, hold on! The bitch was wearing black shoes! Take that! The problem lies in the footprint. The footprint? Note the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why weren't there any bloody footprints found at the scene of the crime? That too. That too. Aha! Uh -huh. As you can see, there are no traces of any such footprints at the scene of the crime. But even more so, she's wearing fucking black shoes! That contradicts your claim about this shoe. Objection! This picture only shows part of the floor, so there could only have... So there could have been bloody footprints. Okay. Bitch, are you colorblind? Also, where are they, Edgeworth? Because we checked the scene and found nothing of the sort! Order! 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 Well, witness? What? <laughs> I, uh... Great going, Mr. Wright! But it, it's true that the lack of a footprint is a contradiction. But then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint. Oh! That's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright, think! Hey, I don't know why I saw- Hold on. Pardon. Okay. Are you thinking that it could be his, uh... He's wearing feet? all white. You figure, if you're wearing all white, you'd kind of want to match. Like, yeah, match it with the white shoes? Yeah, see, either he's wearing white- he could, it could be his shoe. He could be wearing white shoes. I would be surprised to wear see, blue, yeah, I though. See I, see, I could just imagine wearing blue, though. Anyways. I'm just good at finding contradictions. What? What? I see. Now I get it. Get what? Our witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she slipped. There was one vital hint of the truth in her testimony. Wh what are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Oh, and she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. <laughs> oh, I see where this is going. Mm. 
I thought that was a strange thing for the normally cool-headed chief to do. No kidding. Now, witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Oh, that? Hmm. I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. Though apparently you're not the slowest conveyor belt in the lunchbox factory. Witness, well, was the oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. Water? What does that mean? Still don't get it, Mr. Wright? Do you want to know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason? You're gonna say some... Bullshit! ...answer like, to wipe away all of the footprints and bloodstains, when bitch the picture literally has her in black shoes! The fuck you want? Aha! Uh -huh. You don't mean... Yes, the suspect knocked over the, the, oh, that oil drum for one reason and one reason alone. To erase the bloodstains that would become evidence against her. What? That ties things up quite nicely. The bloodstains left on the victim's shoes tie her quite clearly to this murder. Then, after the deed was done, she knocked over the oil drum to erase the telltale sign. And that's why the prosecutor's specialty, erasing evidence. Hey, don't spoil shit in the chat. Wait, what? What was spoiled? Don't worry about it. Okay. That reminds me, Miss Sky's right hand was hurt. Didn't she say she cut herself when she stabbed him? So that's when my sister's blood got on the shoe? Well, I see no reason to belong this trial. B motherfuckers! Mr. Wright, do something, please! What, what can I do? The picture, right? Your sister has confessed to the crime and she tried to conceal it. But, but. Enough. There is no need for further debate. The verdict, Your Honor. Oh, my lord. Very well. You, both of you motherfuckers are so fucking blind. Like, all of you are so fucking blind. Literally, she's wearing black shoes, you dumb fucks! But Angel Star is on the prosecution side! She could have been lying about the water! This court find the defendant, Miss Lana Sky? Little girl. What did you just say? Huh? M me Did you just say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution side? Uh-oh. Well, Somebody. yeah, you are! Somebody. You're saying yeah. my sister hid evidence by erasing bloody footprints. Well? I thought you had your fill, but here you are demanding a second helping. Another lunchbox. A lunchbox called Evidence. Wait, witness, don't tell me you have something else. Oh, Lord. Objection! The time for deliberations is past. Any further comments and you will be held in contempt of court. Your threats don't scare me, the cough-up queen. Look at this. <gasps> you dumb bitches! <laughs> you, you, I swear, I swear to God. I swear to God, if there is any sort of fighting chance amongst all of you for a sort of a brain cell, all of you deserve to give me your brain cell so I can hand it off to Gumshoe at this point. A phonograph? I had it just in case anyone had the gall to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. You were suggesting it belonged to her. Am I stupid? Am I stupid? Am I stupid? I swore on Christ that they were suggesting that that was a lot of shoe. That's what I was thinking too. Like that, that's what that's what I got from what they were trying to say. This entire situation is bullshit. This this entire everyone here is just plain and utter bullshit. Oh my god! Like what? What the fuck? What the fuck? No, 
all you hear. Uh, if you bring this shit up, I'm fucking yelling at your ass from across the room. Mr. Wright, wait! Look at the asphalt in this photo! Hey, it's clearly wet! Sorry, chats are getting a bit annoying now. Anyway. Erasing the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. It's 100% clear that this bitch is an accomplice. This bitch is part of the conspiracy to kill whatever the fuck's happening in this bullshittery. Like, it's 100% she's involved. But the thing is, it's like she's already dancing among this side that all three of these people, like, no, all two of the people that are here, the prosecution edgy boy and judge, obviously don't know how to read and don't know how to look at things. They're colorblind as shit. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I, I couldn't help after. No, you actually did, because now we actually have the means to be able to defend. It's not your fault. I knew it. Phoenix! And it seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. Phoenix! Boot to the head. I'm sorry, Mia. And one for Jenny and the Wimp. Right? Wet or not? Don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Get yourself up off the asphalt. Take another good look. Don't give up. Not until the better end. This is the last piece of evidence. Very well. This time I'd like to declare a verdict for good. No! Objection! Thank you! Your Honor, wait! What is it with you people? Can't I hand down my verdicts in peace anymore? Can you not take fucking bribery food? No. Then I guess you have your answer! Whatever it is, can it wait? No! No, it can't! It will be too late! Look at this photograph, the last one's admitted. This trial isn't over. Until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. So, right. Are you saying there's a problem with this latest piece of evidence? Yes! Yeah. I think later. Yeah, there's a problem. We're wrong, I'm gonna go ahead with this. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show the court the problem in this photograph. Motherfucker, wait. Also, what the, what the hell is this? But also, like, m m Why is there a thing in the muffler? There's a thing in the muffler. Okay, now I'm torn. Do I show the bare fucking foot or do I show the thing in the muffler? The muffler kind of stands out, don't you think? Take that! The problem in this photograph is here. What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Wait just a moment, Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor? You just said muffler. However, I see no trace of a muffler or scarf of any kind of this. What? Motherfucker, that's a muff car muffler right there. A muffler is also part of a car or motorcycle, Your Honor. Just think of it as part of the exhaust system. A pipe. I see, and I see. Do you? Cause I'm pretty sure all of you couldn't tell that the bitch was wearing black shoes. Was that suspicious looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? <laughs> so what if there's something sticking out of the muffler? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Objection! Sorry, Miss Star, but it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is important to this case. You said as much as your testimony. But what? Let's see what Mr. Wright has on his mind. Tell us why you think this piece of cloth in the muffler is related to this case. It would be the picture of her without her muffler. It's not? Would it be the mention of the word muffler? 
Yeah, why would that be the only word that was, like, overheard on the phone call? Yeah. Take that! Miss Star. Recall your testimony for the court. Ah, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. Muffler. Ah. Could it be that the muffler you heard mentioned was actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means this piece of cloth is vital evidence. Oh. Ah! Well, it seems we will have to suspend the proceedings. D suspend? It's possibly black and white colorblind acro a acromato uh, acromatophasia? To separate such extremes of colors? You learn something new every day if that is the true case. Then how would you be able to differentiate light and dark? That's my biggest question on that one. Regardless. I find myself wondering about that piece of cloth. If we leave any question unanswered here, we do a disservice to the law. Have the car of the crime scene inspect that at once, and bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after we've seen all the evidence. Agreed? I suppose so. Phew, that was close. But, we made it. At least for now. This court will adjourn for a 30-minute recess. It's lunchtime after all. He's still hungry? Jesus Christ. Ah.